Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Lucas, Senior Pastor of Promised Land Ministries. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I am so excited about uh, today. I hope that I pray that your family is doing well and I pray that you are, 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 are safe. And, and so I'm just excited about um, what the Lord is doing. So I want to go ahead and get into the message here. You know, I'm not really about a bunch of preambles here. So let's go ahead and pray and get into the word and see what the Holy Spirit wants to tell us. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We submit our works to you. We submit our ways to you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We thank you for supping with us today. We thank you for, for what you're going to do and what you're going to speak in our lives, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. So I am about, I am, this is the first installment of a four part series that we're going to be teaching called storm proof. Um, and it's a different storm proof. I know that uh, pastor Hagee has a marvelous book out there called storm proof, but I was just kind of praying and that's what I feel like the Lord has given me, but it's going to be storm proof. And it's going to be somewhat of a study of, of, uh, Psalm 23, but we're going to do it differently. Psalm 23 is going to be the 23rd Psalm is going to be our, our foundation scripture. And then we're going to go ahead and get into some other, um, areas. Uh, and what caused me to the Holy Spirit, I believe that caused me to, to begin to teach on this series is because of the fact that I'm running into Christians, including myself at times, who, because of what you've been through in your life, because of struggles, because of what you have perceived as setbacks, um, you have you haven't said it openly, but some of the some of the fire, some of the way that you see God has been somewhat diminished. The things that you believe God for for big and great things now, you have it, but it's not that white hot fervent um, type of Thing. And I'm, I'm here um, by the power of the Holy Spirit to restore that. You remember how when you were first saved and you just didn't care, you would just, you know, praise God no matter where you were in the grocery store, you lift your hands, you were in church and people might have thought you were weird, but you would just go and dance before the Lord and praise God. And, and so what happened is things happen in life. You know, uh, Prince had this song called Let's Go Crazy and he had us saying and it said, he said, it's a thing called life. And so sometimes life uh, setbacks or perceived disappointments or challenges now can come and somewhat attempt to buffet the actual call of God and the call and the fire of God is on your life. And that fire is birthed out of how you see God, the greatness of God, the infallibility of God, the size of God, um, as opposed to your enemies. And as life goes on, as you hang around um, Christians who are maybe not that much on fire. And as you have challenges in life, you can find yourself, um, in a place. If you don't guard that, where you believe in God, you're loving God, but you're more attracted in trying to explain there's trials and tribulations that you're going through rather than talking about the God of victory, because you, you, you have almost Stop believing God for big things. You're saying it in front of your friends, but the reason why it's not manifesting is because your faith is not activated. And so before I start here, and Holy Spirit just wants to remind me to tell you that the reason why I have these two diplomas back here, one, my master's degree from UNC Chapel Hill, and one, uh, my doctor from Oral Roberts, and soon to have my degree from Harvard Law School up there. Um, and, and, and these are trophies that were taken from the enemy. And I've got plenty of them. <laughs> and, and, and so, so I, I keep these up and I want to show you that a man that graduated from high school by one point that they gave him, smart kid, but I had, I ended up having to work in a, a factory um, right after school from 4 p.m. to midnight every night. Uh, it was about an hour and a half drive home, get up at 5.30 to go to school. So I was tired and hungry my last two years of school. I just really, really struggled. Um, so, but God made up for it miraculously because I began, I kept beginning. I kept seeing God in a big way. I kept believing God for big things. So these are some of the giants that fail. Amen. And so I put them up there for you to understand that I didn't even start school back until um, I was 30 years old. And it took me 10 years to get my bachelor's degree after that. I was 40 when I got my 36, 30, something like that when I got my, yeah, I was like 38 when I got my first bachelor's degree. And I just kept chugging away. I got 
turned down by Oral Roberts probably four or five times before they let me in, and I had to take nine practice classes first, which I had to pay for, you know, in order to qualify for the doctor program. Hmm? I've got another master's degree up there, and they let me do it online while I was trying to support my family and, and work. I had three or four jobs in school and all this other stuff, working, and then had a ministry. So God did it. Amen. So anything that you want from God, you're going to have opposition is going to come and say no, because I don't want that to be a testimony. Don't you think that people are upset to see that on the wall? But I put that there and I put them in between me so that when life gets tough for you, you can look and say, uh, uh, no, God. And I'll tell you the testimony of both of these. And God did these miraculously to the point I ended up doing the going to my commencement in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one weekend on May May 4th last year uh, for my doctorate, then going to UNC Chapel Hill the next weekend for my commencement for that. God gave me the doctor first. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Miraculous stuff. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get in the word of God because I want to begin to, by the Holy Spirit, begin to build your confidence back. Begin to build it back from where it is and begin to just like you remember how when you were a kid, you saw mommy and daddy as being perfect and, and invincible. And all of a sudden now you, when you became a teenager, you begin to talk back and roll your eyes at him and all that. And then when you get older, you don't see him as invincible. You don't see him as, as evil like you did when you were a teenager. Then when you get older, you respect them. Even though they are imperfect, you and you respect them. So there's a, there are stages of your life here, but at the same time, God doesn't want you to respect him. He wants you to see him like Jesus said, see him in childlike faith. So let's go ahead and get in the word here. And um, it's in Psalm 23, um, the 23rd Psalm we want to start at. And then we're going to go ahead and um, read um, where we want to land, which is the story of David and Goliath. The story of David and Goliath. Amen. The story of David and Goliath. So, all right. So I want you to get, I want you to get, get to, get to where you are first. I'm going to give you a moment to get there. And then we're going to go and go right to, um, the story of David and Goliath. Amen. So, all right, let's go. Let's go. Let, no, we're going to go ahead and read here. So a Psalm, uh, 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the, the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. This is one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. Even people who don't even believe in God uh, know they've heard of the 23rd Psalm and they're familiar with it. You begin to pray this, they're going to know that it's the 23rd Psalm. That's how popular it is. So David now is, is here and he's running for his life like usual. Most of, the, most of his life he was. He's running from Saul, part of his life. He's running from his own son, Absalom, who wants to kill him. And David now, in the middle of this, he belts out this song called the 23rd Psalm or Song. And he's singing now while his enemies are chasing him, looking for his demise. And, and while he's doing that, he does not lose perspective of who God is. So he declares not just to himself, and yet he declares to his soul, but to his enemies, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I shall not want. He's saying this so they can hear it and so that he can hear that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green paint. He, he gives me peace. When I should have lost my mind, he gives me peace. He gives me joy. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Again, green pastures are provision. I'm sorry. And then he leads me to still waters. He provides for me. And while I'm there, I can eat in peace. 
You want to know why you don't have peace? It's not because of the storm that you're in. It's because you're allowing that storm now to, 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 to skew or pervert or twist or distort who God is in your and his power in your life. That storm keeps talking to you. That threat keeps talking to you. I'm going to get you this time. I'm going to do this this time. And then you've never been got yet. You're still here and ain't getting got. So in the middle of that storm, David begins to blow up his God instead of blowing up the storm. Instead of blowing up his enemies who chasing him, he begins to praise God. He begins to exalt God because you got to know who God is. Some of us, when we are squeezed and we're put through the test and we're, and we're tried, we're looking and we're, we're stressed and God is looking down from heaven like, man, at God. He act like there's not a God in heaven. I remember when I was going through some things and God was like, man, am I not God? I'm running, I'm stressed. And this was years ago. I've grown out of that now. I sleep like a baby now. Because God has taught me. I remember blowing up. I say, man, Lord, this can happen. And they're threatening this, Lord. And they're doing this. And at work, they're doing this. And, 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 and in court, they're doing it. And Lord, I ain't got nothing. Oh, my God, Lord, help me. And God pulled me in the parking lot. I was in a Walmart parking lot one time. <laughs> About the, In the Walmart. God arrested me in the Walmart. And he, you know what he said? He said, bring this person out that you're afraid of. Bring this spirit out or bring this threatening person out. So I can be afraid too. Let me see how big they are. Let me see how strong they are compared to my might. I want to shake too. Let Show me who they are. Who is this person that you're running from? I can't say anything. Because right then I realized that I had insulted God, man. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He makes me to lie down in green pastures no matter what people do, no matter what your situation is. No, if you don't have a job or not, God, can, God will still make you lie down in green pastures and bring you before the still waters. He restores my soul. Whatever the enemy took, whatever you thought he took, and it wasn't even a taking, it was God repositioning you and pruning you, so God will restore that. Do not think that that's the end of your life. Don't think that that's no matter what. If it's sickness that took it, you need to look at the woman with the issue of blood. If it's a job loss that took it, you need to look at Job. You need to look at the man who fell among thieves, who God even sent a stranger to pull him out of a ditch. If God got to send somebody who ain't even saved to pull you out of a ditch, baby, and bandage you up and use their own money to put you in a room. If you are believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you got a covenant with God, your days are not over with. They're just beginning. You got He who watches over you does not sleep or slumber. I need you to get up and give God some praise right now for that. That's enough of you moping around, scared, running like a wimp over some spirit or something or some bully that's, and you got God on your side. Well, they're telling me this. The bully's job is to separate you from the strong. So what they're going to do is challenge your walk with Christ so that why? So that you get separated from God. So that you don't have come. They want, the devil wants better than anything. Are you the son of God? His trick is to try his best like he did with Eve and he had success with Eve is to separate them from their relationship with God because they know he knows one-on-one -on -one they are diminished with him. He knows he's full if they have confidence in the love of God for them and in their relationship with God. So his the enemy's number one job now is to, is to, when God is trying to restore your soul and he is trying to get you not to run to God. So which leads me to, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his sake. And I'm here to prophetically tell you today that your enemies have been bullying you. They have been mocking you. And God is now saying it's not time to quit now because I got to restore you for my sake because you carry my name. I remember a story and, and me and my uh, siblings used to mess up so bad. Mama used to take us to church. Daddy used to, you know, try his best to like, go to church. He, he'd go sometimes. He believed in God, though. He just worked a lot to provide for his family. 
So I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Christian neighborhood. I always call it the Black Mayberry. You know? School teacher, my next door neighbor. School bus came. Family, two parent homes. Everybody had a two parent home. It was normal. Everybody, when you got sick, we didn't have a, we, a, a hospital was 20 minutes. Well, you know what? Let me focus on what I, I don't know. Forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but anyway, I, that, that, that distraction kind of, the Holy Spirit bring that back to me, what I was going to say before I went off. He leads you in a path of righteousness for his sake. Oh, yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So my mom, who was a praying woman, had haters in her own household, in her own family. Her sisters would say, look at that. I, uh, and, and when we would mess up, my, her sisters would be quick to say, I thought you were saved. You took them back to church. Look at your kids acting up like, I thought you were a Christian. They're going to always say that. Demonic pe influence people are always going to do that. Why? Because that's their way of being justified. It didn't take all that. Look at Sister Patsy's kids. So God now begins to raise the four of us up. God now begins to make prophets and pastors. But it took some time because God hears that and he sees my mama pulling four kids to church sometimes without a car, without a driver's license. Making my brother Marvin go to the altar because he's sick. Making me go usher in the choir. To where the word of God was in me and in me and in me and in me and in my heart to where I desired it. My nickname growing up as a little boy was a preacher. I, that's what I wanted to be. So God now hears that. He says, I'm going to, Sister Pastor, I'm going to save your kids for your sake. Because I hear them mocking you, so I'm not going to have that happen. And so the strong one showed up and he says, that's it. Uh, uh, or Brother Charles, and, I'm, and God came to me in a dream. I gave my life to Christ by a toilet in an apartment. And the glory of God fell in that room, in that bathroom by that toilet, kneeled in it, but I was living with somebody. I had never done that before. My mama never did it. My mama kissed one person in her whole life, and that was my dad. That's all I knew. So I, 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 was, I was doing something I didn't even know. My mama never did that. I gave my life to Christ then. It was a domino effect. My sister gave her life to Christ. Then I did. Then my other siblings did. But God, for your sake, what's God going to do with your kids for your sake? What's God going to do for you for your mama's sake? For, your, for his sake, it's not because of you. God will keep you. For, you got to understand that stop looking at your situation and circumstances. God's name is on the line. He, he, he refuses to let you stay in that situation. Why don't I believe you? Dr. Lucas, I'm trying to believe you. Why don't? Because you have been tainted now with the, the spirit of defeat. You've been hanging around your friends. You have been rolling that stuff over in your mind, rolling the devil, been rolling that those threats over in your mind so much that that's more real and bigger than God. And God is looking out from heaven disgusted. He's thinking, as if I didn't do this last week, as if I didn't heal your body. Them fools been trying to let you go for two years. <laughs> I met Rick three months ago when you had the same problem. God restores. And God restores your soul and he leads you in the path of righteousness for his sake. Because you're a Christian. And the David says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, your rod and your staff and the shepherds is, 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 is teaching and correction. Teaching and correction. It gets you back on course. 
That means that what does that mean? What is the value, of Dr. Lucas or Pastor Lucas? What is it? What is the value of the shadow of death have to do with teaching and correction? God will use that adversity to teach you who He is, to teach you He's stronger than that. He teach you who you are, to teach you to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to learn it. To teach you to praise God no matter what you see. To teach you to have joy anyway. To teach you not to buckle and cower every time some threat comes. To teach you to be patient and sometimes long suffering because there's times in my mama that I said some crazy stuff to my mama. My mama called me the Antichrist one day. <laughs> and the funny thing, it was two weeks before I got saved. I was talking crazy. And she was like, oh my, and she cried. She was in, we went to Walmart again. <laughs> But her friend, Sister Jeanette, she said, Sister Jeanette, oh my God, I think I've given birth to the Antichrist. That's how bad I was talking. But God saw down. My mama pulled me to the side that day at the back of her place in the backyard. And she said, I'm tired of this thing. I didn't raise you to be like you are. I'm giving you to my God. And when she did that, I went to sleep and I saw what she was talking about. I had a I had a I had a dream. I had a visitation, woke up in a cold sweat. It was pretty much the Lord saying, don't play. It was not Lord sending some kind of Valentine's Day card. It was him saying, look, stop playing around. I said, okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to be saved, yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and God is teaching you that he's got you. He's allowing these people to threaten you and you're supposed to stick your chest out and say, God is with me, fool. God is with me, Bill. God is with me, sickness. God is with me, wayward child. Let me tell you something. Your children ain't better than the Holy Ghost. The bad influence in their life ain't better than God. As a matter of fact, if there's any bad influence, God said a millstone. And you got to understand that, that with your children, with your job, anything like that, you've got to understand that we've all had it. We've always been, we've all been that rebellious child. Amen. God is going to fix it. Understand, do not let your problems seduce you into believing that God is not with you just because you have struggles. That's why this scripture is here that yes, God, David acknowledges, yes, I'm walking through some trouble right now. Yes, I'm having some problem right now. But guess what, devil? I, you ain't going to fool me into thinking God is not with me. He's right here and his rod of correction and his staff, his, his staff of correction and his rod of correction and his staff, which is teaching, his mantle is right here with me. And guess what? They bring me comfort. His correction and his teaching brings comfort to me. So when I'm that, in that situation, that little tap on the ankle that they used to do with the sheep to bring them over here, God will tap you and say, look, I'm here. I'm with you. I'm here to tell you that God might not get you out of every situation because God is preparing you for verse five, which is he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. So my mom had enemies of her own blood who said all kinds of things because we were acting up. Look at, guess what? You can tell who your enemies are when you're down. They waiting on that to, to, to nail you then, but they forget one. I, I, look, I talked to a blood relative, man, and I had lost uh, my job. I had lost a bunch of stuff, man. And, and then you could tell, man, boy, I had relatives being mean and tough then. And one time I, I wasn't arrogant, but I got confidence in God. And I looked at him and said, you know what? You know I'm going to recover, right? <laughs> so you're saying all this stuff now, but you know, uh, 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 you know I'm going to recover. You know this is, I'm anointed. Uh, you, you, you know this ain't permanent, right? <laughs> you know, right? And he calmed down and said, hold on, no, no. Oh, hold on. I need to start kissing up again. Because <laughs> something in him, I know he's right. He's been here before.
You need to understand and you need to tell your haters that you know I, you know I'm going to recover, right? Because guess what? While you're in the valley of the shadow of death, God is preparing a table so that everyone who doubted that will see your reemergence. God is preparing the table. And what happened, the reason why you're in the struggle you're in now is because God wanted you, <clears throat> God will use the valley of the shadow of death to let you know that you're not strong enough to get out of this yourself so that when you get out, you praise me. He don't want you to, he tired of you preparing the table for yourself and going on social media talking about what you did. You know what? I, I, I studied so hard and I'm so brilliant that I, um, I graduated twice. I mean, you know, I'm Dr. Lucas, you know, I have this, I'm just a genius. I did this while working three, four jobs. Who else can do that? Wow. God, like, no, dude, take the jobs, take that. I'm going to do this in the middle of the toughest time of your life. To let everybody know that I'm still God. I'm going to prepare the table and let your enemy see it. So he walks you through that to humble you and to prove you and let you know that, it, that he walks you through the valley of the shadow of death. Why, Dr. Lucas? So that the humble, to take that pride away. To let you know you didn't do it. To let you know that how much you need God. To let you know how weak and helpless you are without God. And also so that you can see that you have some fake friends around you. And so that you can point it. So that so that, so that that um, um, you can see the people that were talking about you. So when you get that table, you can't invite everybody you did before. You know, we as Christians, and we, we're, we're good at our, our, our strength is we have big hearts. If you really are saved, I said, if you really are saved, God has touched your heart and you're a giver. You're a forgiver. You're a lover. You have a big heart because the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. But if you're just playing now, you can be mean and then be in church and be an elder prophesying to people and be stingy as crap and be hateful and all that other stuff. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to a regenerated Christian who is considered soft by the world standard. Matter of fact, they had a real Christian in the White House one time called Jimmy Carter, and they thought he was too soft. That's what I'm, that's all, that's one to say for real. Because, because God has the reign of your heart and not you. And because of that, now, when you're led by that and your love for people, you will start handing money out and bailing people out that God said, no, let, let them cook. You can't let everybody at your table because some of these people are spitting in your food. Some of these people are eating and, and eating your food and then got a stomach full of your food and go back and talk behind your back. And God now loves you enough now in this season to take you to a valley of a shadow of death so that people can see you all but dead and gone and start running their mouth so that you can take notes and see you forgive people, but you, you ain't got to trust everybody. So now when God restores you, you have a record. You, 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 got, you, you are a person that had 500 friends. Now after this, you got three real, three real friends. You had three real friends before. You had 297 fakers. But God revealed the fakers that were talking about you behind your back now. But now they can they, they doing it in your face now. Amen. I don't think we're going to get to the David and Goliath thing today, but we're going to get there because you need to hear this. So you walk through the valley of shadow of death. Verse five, you pre he prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemies. And then he anoints you. He anoints your head with oil and your cup runs over. Guess what? After your trial, after he blesses you, then the anointing comes. What is the anointing for? To tell your testimony, to tell your walk, to, tr to teach other people how to get out of it, to bless other people. God has a, what the valley of the shadow of death teach, gives you wisdom and how to manage your money, how to handle people. Because when we first get saved, we're so full of love. I always tell people, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and saved, I want to buy the world a Coke. I was calling everybody uh, that I had hurt. Back 20, 30 years back, I'm trying to call and find everybody and repent and apologize to them. I was a pushover. I didn't understand how to set boundaries. Easily hurt. Heartbroken. Been hurt from the pulpit 
to my own house and go and cry. And you're trying to hate him, but you can't because the Holy Spirit is there now and he occupies that place. I've been there when you are full of love and I'm there now when you're full of love and you're scared to love again, but you're scared to go and talk to people because you know what's going to happen because the older Holy Spirit is open with the heart. So God allowed me to go through personal valley of shadow death so I can learn some wisdom, but still not harden my heart towards people. So when he prepares to get you in that wealthy place, I'm telling you now, prophetically, people are going to be begging. The same ones that were talking about you when you were down are going to be begging to get to that table. It doesn't mean you hate them. It doesn't mean you don't have compassion on them, but you're going to have to give them a scripture instead of writing them a check this time. Some people you're just going to have to cut off and block the number and let God and hand them over to God. Amen. That's wisdom. And that's that's the gospel. Because you can't be God to people. You can't be, you can't, you can't go in and 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 people are sinning, people are doing wrong, and, and, and God is judging them, and you keep sticking your hand in there. You may have a rebellious child right now. And God knows if he gets you uh, 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 that money that he promised to get you and bless your business, that you're going to go and buy that child a car, go get Pookie and bring him in the house and he don't have a job. Don't worry, mama going to take care of you. God said, no, I want him to grow up. So God sometimes will allow you in that valley until he gets your priorities right and say, you know what? This blessing is for you. I, I don't mean you to go hand that money, use your checkbook to do to do the job of the Holy Spirit, because we thinking sometimes that money and prosperity. Now, God, God prepares that table in the presence of your enemies. Now, God didn't tell you to come and have them sit down. That's why God prepares it. So if God prepares a table, he's the one that invites. It ain't your table, baby. It ain't your table. All right. And he does it in the presence of your enemies. And when, where, do you, where do you know who your enemies are? Because your enemies, a lot of times, especially Christians, if they got enemies, it's somebody who they don't do it in your face. They pray against you behind closed doors. I met this woman, man. She said, and she, she was just proud of it, too. She was in witchcraft, and she didn't even know. It. She said, I got these, this Bible, and I got a list of names, and everybody I put in this list of names in this, in this Bible, their life turns to terrible. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to pray it against me because you're crazy. But I'm thinking, man, where's the character and integrity of the body of Christ now to where you don't pray against your enemies and their demise or someone that you perceive as an enemy and their demise now? Now, doesn't she know that this is a form of witchcraft? Well, it is witchcraft. And so God now will have it to where, and I always use this as an example. I always use this as an example of when you're in the um, um, lions or ambush predators a lot of times. And they are ambush predators. Predator, many wolves are ambush predators. And a lot, and what they're looking for, and I know you see in the wild kingdom, they're getting a strong ox and a strong boar. What they're looking for a lot of times, they're looking for an easy meal. They're looking for the weak. They're looking for the young. They're looking for the elderly. They're looking for the injured. So what God will do in the spirit, you got spiritual predators too, who love to uh, uh, wreak havoc, who love to pray against, they, who love, they got to have somebody to be mad at, So that, and, and, and they love the destruction of others. So what happens now is you might not even know that that's an enemy, so God will give you what's, what they think is a limp. And when you're limping around with no money, limping around with something, like, and then now they come out the bushes thinking they're ready to devour you. And you're thinking, man, I thought you loved me. And God now is giving you that fake limp or letting you go through that valley of shadow of death so that you see who they really are. And then when you come into success again, that you know, well, keep them at a distance. Block the number. Keep them at a distance. Right? Because I'm telling you, I mean, I've been wealthy. I've been broke. And when I'm wealthy, a lot of times I don't see my enemies. I don't see them. They're smiling to get certain things. 
they tell you what you want to hear, but then they're doing other things. Their spirit, they're scheming, right? And then when I lose, when I've lost things, then they come out and they give me a piece of their mind. They're la they're doing all kinds. And then you and, and I'm not like so emotional. I'm looking like hmm. I'm observing them like hmm. because I know I'm going to recover. So I'm I'm taking notes like man. If they've done this to me, how many people have they hurt? And I'm observing their character. Right? So this, that, this, this, this is important. When God prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies and anoints your head with oil and you're in overflow, God is not going to give you that without wisdom. So you gain the wisdom. You don't gain the wisdom on the mountaintop. You gain it in the valley. Amen. And then verse six, and I'll end with this. And, God, and he says, after that, then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Or goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David, in the middle of all this trouble, he trumpets God as a God who is a provider, a God of rest, a God who is a sanctifier, a God who is an ever-present help in a time of trouble, a God who is a teacher, a God who 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 uh, uh, not only provides but restores you in your status, provides wealth, and then He's a God who anoints you and covers you. Amen. Because the anointing keeps it. The anointing is a barrier. The anointing makes things easier. Amen. Then He's a God of eternal life. Isn't that good to know? That is good to know. So what do we do with this man? What do we do with all of this? Since we didn't teach about David and Goliath, what do we do with all of this? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We are encouraged by it. We're edified by it. We are, we are strengthened and we should see Psalm 23 in a new light now. We should see, again, that the overall overarching message, message here is to don't let whatever struggle you're in now be the thing that's going to be. Just like Goliath, your struggle is trying to bark at you falsely and look at you as if it's you versus him, and it's not. It's him versus God. He's trying to take your focus off God and get it on him because he knows he can't be God. So in his mind, the reason why he's barking at you is because he's trying to make it about, he's trying to block out the fact that God is with you. How do you do it? Man, there ain't no preacher. She ain't saved. So what they try to do is separate you from God. And so they can just, they can beat up Sister Susie. And so in their mind, that takes the fear out of any kind of repercussions. Right? But you've got to understand that God is with you. God is with you through this. God will restore you. And you've got to keep your childlike faith again. Yeah, I encourage you to get that back. And encourage you to get the, the, uh, tune into the broadcast. Tune into the YouTube channel. This is just one installment. And guess what? I'm going to try to do. I'm going to do all four of them today, baby. We're having a party. We're here now. We're in a quarantine now. So I'm going to go take a small break and come back and bring some stuff. Amen. Because I'm determined by the Holy Spirit to build you up. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to pray and we're going to we're going to get out of here. I'm going to take me a brief recess and then we're going, we're going to go ahead and reconvene and we're going to get installment two going. The deuces, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, that, 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 that first of all, if anyone does not know Jesus Christ, that they come to accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, Lord God. That Father God, I ask you to honor their grandmama's prayer, their daddy's prayer, Lord, their mama's prayer, their aunt's prayer, their best friend's prayer, their school teacher's prayer, whoever it was, their pastor's prayer, Lord God. Lord God, to lead them to righteousness for your sake, Lord God. Lord God, I, I, I ask for that now in the name of Jesus. I also pray, Lord God, blessing, Lord God, Lord God, touch the heart of the people so they may receive, Lord God. Let this video, let this message go um, and, and, and reach the people who you ordained for it to reach. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, until next time.